Jesus will do it in the perfect time. Okay. He absolutely will. Oh, thank you for your faithfulness on that. I do so appreciate it. I do. He likes to be under his bottom. Make sure to hold his tail in his legs. Let my words be your life. 
be basing themselves off the reality of of earth. So every time they got into a boat with Jesus, you know, things messed up. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> anyways, he said he's. <laughs> He said, he made a funny comment. He goes, I don't think I would get in a boat with Jesus anymore. I'd be like, I'm buying a horse and I'll meet y'all on the <laughs> so, Yeah, but anyway, so he was, he was, he would get frustrated with his disciples because they were functioning on the reality of this earth. They let the things of this earth cloud their eyes and, and from their reality in heaven. I wonder if the reality of the happens. kingdom. What? I wonder. I wonder if that still happens. He gets a little frustrated with us because all we can see is what we got, right? Well, and he gave, he gave a, an example. He said, you know, back in the days when like, the Romans would go in and invade an area, they would invade oh, an area and then they would come in and they would transform the area. They would teach the people how to walk like a Roman, how to talk like a Roman. They would redo all the shops and do business like the Romans. Yeah. So when the emperors and, and the high people came up, they felt comfortable. They yeah, were in their own land. Hard. And he said, how are we doing that? How? What if, are we making this comfortable so that when Jesus shows up, when God shows up, he's comfortable? Well, it, yeah, it's, it's about our life. It's about, Amen. are you making your life, okay, your home, your dwelling place, your dwelling place okay? Yeah. Are you making that a place where God feels at home? Where it's like he comes in and he's like, oh, this is heaven. I have it. I'm still there. Amen. So then he said. So then he goes on. Can we have, can we have a church <gasps> that could represent and heaven and look like heaven and feel like heaven and have a reality of heaven so that God comes in and goes, oh, I'm at home because that's what the Roman Empire did whenever they went in. So then he, then he went on to say, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Then he went on to say, I wonder if, I wonder if a city could yeah. look like heaven and could be like heaven so much that God feels completely at home coming and just residing there and coming and and he says this is this is the this is the reality of heaven. This is the reality that Jesus functioned in. Which, so Isaiah sixty five describes that. Yeah. When you read it, that's really cool. Yeah. Anyway, so I was just like, okay, we've been, I'll put it this way, we've been functioning in the kingdom of heaven, and this is what I felt. I've, we've been working and striving and functioning in the kingdom of heaven, but I don't feel like I'm dwelling in the kingdom of heaven. Yet. I'm, I don't feel like I'm living in that is my, all my reality. I'm having realities of it, but for us to dwell and reside for everything that we do to come from being in heaven... Journey, journey, though. That's a whole oh, life. it is. A, That's a whole lifetime. Oh, yeah. I understand that, but here's the thing: is that that there's a reality that we can be now living and functioning live in, yeah. in the kingdom of heaven, now. in heaven now, and and be and be doing what Jesus did, and be walking in power and peace and completely unaffected by this world. Jesus was completely unaffected by this world. I mean, even through his crucifixion, the dude did unhumanly possible things because his reality was still in heaven. Yes. Hey, Jeremy, can I say something? Like yes. That? Maureen and I, we both know <laughs> when we come here in the morning, it's like coming into heaven. Amen. Amen. You guys, <laughs> Amen. you guys are already making this place like heaven. Amen. Oh. Amen. Come, Lord. Well, that's why we never want to leave here. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But so, it's hard to quit at 9 o'clock. It was affirming to hear him say, and he was thinking yeah, a bunch he, of things, and turning out to each other going, Who are doing that? We're doing that. Who are doing that? And we're doing that. And we're doing that. And so it Thank was you, Jim. very Thank affirming. You. Um, Thank you. Okay, Maureen first, and then I'll. Okay. Well, I have a, a testimony. And we were singing that song about, uh, you know, our words. Well, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, after that experience, I could not talk oh. for the longest time. I'm wow. talking about like maybe a couple of weeks. Wow. I couldn't talk. Wow. And you know what I think is like when Jesus comes, he's going to be real happy if he says, Oh, I like Reading. In Reading, everybody thinks like I do. 
Because you talk like you think. Yeah. 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 You, you know, talk like that's... you think. And everybody in in um, you know Douglas County. I like Douglas County because everybody's thinking like I think. Yeah. I know. Amen. 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 He speaks those words. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm far from you know I I, I didn't have a grasp on stuff. I mean I couldn't talk, but I didn't have a grasp on what I was supposed to talk. You know the Word of God and everything. I, I'm that, but, Amen. Um, we had a time of silence too. To do, <laughs> yeah, and self discipline when we yeah, learned about we were agreeing with when the When we got the we book, you sent like us. Jesus and we were not talking like heaven. We then, the Lord said, stop talking unless something from heaven comes out of your mouth. And yeah. so we literally were going around going, I just, I think, and we would, we were like biting our tongues and we were training ourselves to stop talking negatively. We were, and, and we would go up to, we, and one of us would let one slip, and we'd be like, I don't think you want to say that. That's not really the, what you want to create right now. And so, because every time you speak, yeah. you create. You guys okay? Create. And so, we create. that's Amen. right. We're creators. We're made in the image of God. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Dad. So this is really cool, you guys, because a year ago, as pastors, Yes. We were down in Jacksonville. Yeah. We prayed Isaiah 65, 65. over yeah. Roseburg, right over that. Douglas County, as a city and a county, the city of God. Yeah. That's what Isaiah 65 yeah. says. So I want you guys to all go read that and pray it. Yeah. Pray it. Why did you say it over Roseburg when we were in Jacksonville? Yeah, and the pastors, 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 all the pastors from oh, it here. Yeah. It was all the pastors from here. Jacksonville, we go down, down by Medford. Yeah. Not Florida. Uh, at uh, Applegate. <laughs> we, were at the, we were at the Applegate Retreat Center, the mountaintop uh, oh. retreat center. And, it, and I get to go back uh, in, in a week, in two Mondays. <laughs> to be with the, in two Mondays. It's kind of like kids. Two, no, two, two Mondays and two sleeps. <laughs> I get to go back in two Mondays. <laughs> I was, can you tell I'm excited about it? Because when we pray together in the heart of these men, I love these men. You guys, we have some pastors that are looking men. For an open heaven, amen. we have oh. pastors that are praying, pastors that are amen. crying out to God. Oh and man, they need to watch this thing. Oh. Oh. You guys God give it to us, but there's so much on YouTube and different things. We're basically, I'm getting sermons every day. We're getting worship sets every day because God just puts them. Like yes, God gave this one yesterday to People Holly. Share like, oh, with us. so she shared it with me that night, and so people also. Post things like all. I mean, I, Facebook is like my ministry tool now, and so I would check in, and there's. I'll write down. I'll see. A, I'll see a ministry clip or a video clip, or I'll get. A, I'll read a word from Graham Cook, or I'll read a word from a worship pastor or something, and and it'll give a scripture, and it's just like I'm constantly being. Now that I'm looking for it with a new intention and a new idea about trying to find heaven all the time, <clears throat> then. God is just like, oh, you're that whole seeking you'll find. I'm totally living it right yeah, now. We are. So, um, oh, and, yeah. and because it's literally over the past, I don't know, two weeks now, we are just having just every day, God just boom, 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 throwing stuff and saying, oh, oh, yeah, here it is. And this, and you need to know this, and you want to see this, and this is your reality, and this is who you are. And, yeah. and anyways, and yeah. so we've just, I've just come to this different, it's just sustaining. He's just really being faithful and just strengthening us and sustaining us and showing us that that the way that Jesus functioned was not because only because he was God and man. He did everything as a man and showed us that we can have those realities too. That living in the presence okay, of heaven so this must is our be reality the Holy too. Spirit, uh -huh, as always. So here we go. First John four seventeen says. As Jesus is in this world, so are, are we. Amen. Glory. As he is yeah. in yeah, this so world, yeah. so are we. So how is Jesus? Jesus is strong. We're strong. Jesus is 
has abundance. We're living in abundance. He's in power. We have power. He is victorious over death. We're victorious over death. He is love. I am love. Yeah, and this is right here. This is so cool. Maybe. <laughs> Herein is love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is right now today, so are we. In heaven? No. This verse is not referring to heaven. Look at it again and shout it out loud. In this world. In this world! In this world. So how is he? He is strong, and so are we. He's in abundance, and so are we. He's in power, and so are we. We are in him. He is in us. Yeah. He has victory. We have Amen. victory. Amen. By the way, that's that's the language of John 14 when he talks about the world will no longer see me, but yeah. you will, because yeah. I because I'm in him and he he will be in you. Yes. And so the yes. language of of the presence yes. is right there in John 14. Huge. Yes. I have one more scripture. <laughs> All right. Breathe. Then we have some brag on God. Then we have some brag on God. Yeah. Gods, but, but one more scripture. So I'm reading. I jumped up this morning, got my shower down, and I wanted to get into my daily Bible reading. And I forgot that God sent Jacob back to Bethel. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. In, in chapter 35, he said, after the all of what I shared this week about Esau and all of the things that happened and God showing up and and, uh, and call it the face of God. Remember when he called it the face of God and, and you were like seeing that smile. So I thought about smiles yesterday all day about bringing the face of God to people. So after all that with Esau, God said, I want you to go back to Bethel. And he said, I want you to get rid of all idols. So they were still carrying stuff with them. Baggage. He well, rid of all and, the idols. Well, and the, his wives. Yeah. You know, so they had stuff from, his from wives Laban. Had bunches from of Laban. Yeah. Idols. And yeah. all the things. So uh, get rid of all that and put on clean clothes. I thought that was interesting. So clothe yourself. Get ready for the present. So so listen to this. <laughs> I love it. I need the glasses. Sorry. Can you go away? Huh? I speak to your eyes. Yes. Right now. They are. They are. They are getting better. That they get better. I was actually up to like three, and now I'm back down to what is it? One and a half. Yeah. Okay. We're now going to Bethel, where I will build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. Oh. We build an altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress. He has been with me wherever <laughs> I have gone. That's true. Wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all of the idols and earrings. He buried them under a great tree near Shechem. And as they set out, listen to this. This is the presence Shechem. of God. Shechem. This is the presence of God. As they set out, all of the enemy nations were afraid of them. Good. There was terror. God spread terror. Come on, enemy. God. Spread terror over the enemy That's in Douglas it. County. In God's Come presence, on. there's terror. That's why I believe, God's just speaking this to me, you guys. I believe when we have the presence, when we're, yeah. when we're hosting the presence of God, the enemy has to run. flees. Yeah. The He's enemy terrified. runs. Oh. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So, so Bill gave a testimony, or he was talking about a story, and right after they just had this Amen. encounter on the second encounter on the sea with Jesus, and they were pretty much, you know, 
getting rid of their lunch back on land. <laughs> All of a sudden, the this naked crazy man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So he was like the town freak. And yeah. ran around naked, lived in the graveyard, ate everybody's cats and dogs. Okay, that's oh, gross. Anyways, and so the, he was completely <laughs> demon possessed, and they don't know they don't know how demon possessed he was, but there was enough demons in him to go into two thousand pigs. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so yeah, so he's a dominion me. Demoniac. De 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 there you go. Oh, yeah. So anyways, yeah, so he's running flat out, huh? Yeah, but that the little Jesus, the they said, put us in those pigs, yeah. and he did, they ran off the cliff and died. Okay. Well, how much is a so, legion? A legion, yeah. Because they called it legions. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so he runs, he runs <laughs> straight at Jesus, yeah. and he goes, so you know, you know, Peter and, and John are like, you take him at the feet, I'll take him at the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm take this guy out. You know, be ready for Jesus. <laughs> but he gets to the feet of Jesus and falls down and worships. Yeah. And the thing he said, <laughs> well, this was awesome. The thing Bill said, he goes, not even legions of demons can keep a man, man from worshiping, worshiping Jesus. Jesus. Come on! <laughs> yeah. And he said, <laughs> he said oh. what did he say about the church? He well, said, so oh, church so the church has no excuse. Has no excuse. Transformed, okay, and and the the town they, he got put on clean clothes and and he says he says and the town was afraid. Yeah. So Jesus healed this guy and the town's like they're afraid and they they were so afraid they kicked Jesus and his disciples out out of town. They're like um, you've got to leave because he was the crazy man and we're really uncomfortable with how he is right now. <laughs> so then so then he's. So, he, so he's going, and where's the, the used to be naked guy? He's traveling right along with Jesus, and Jesus says to him, no, you have to stay. Yeah. And so he says, so Bill says, and the disciples were probably thinking, oh, no, this man needs some discipleship. He needs to, we need to have 13 here. This would be the guy, you know. But instead, Jesus says one step. He goes, you need to go back and tell everyone. About what I've done for you, yeah. and uh, the next time he's just came though, back to that area. yeah. And so he went back, and so then he gave this really funny yeah. example. So the the guy goes, "Hi, um, I'm naked man. And, uh, <laughs> sorry about your cats and dogs, um, but." <laughs> And he goes and he tells, and, and it says everyone in that the next area. time Jesus came, every single person from every, every, every town person from every went and saw town. Jesus. And, oh, and, and came to listen to him. Amen. And so, anyways, it's just uh, the reality. And man, I thought about the one step, and I thought, man, man, I've been asking okay, when for that. We, okay, the Lord spoke to me. Okay. When we live in the reality of heaven. The one Jesus, step will happen. give me the grace for that. I when so want that. When we live in the reality of heaven, the one I step. I so want that. Happens. I know. We're so, we're going to get it. Okay. We're going to get it. And it's about learning. Like Carol was saying, it's a process. But we have, there's a hunger inside of us. And it's how hungry you are for it. Because there's so many things in this world that can, that can try and appease our appetite or distract our stomach and 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 these little little things that come in and some of it's our past some of it's our stuff that we haven't allowed jesus to come in and heal completely yet okay this is why triumph over trauma is so incredibly powerful because it's it's uprooting and taking away everything that the devil is jerking you down by yeah okay so explain the one step the one step is you come in and you speak <laughs> the dude was maybe had <laughs> maybe been healed for an hour you know, and you go, and Jesus says, "No, you're good. Go back and preach." <laughs> in, in the church society, we think that a person has to have, yeah. you know, has recovery. to be has to have a year of clean and sober, okay. and then two years of seminary uh, to be able to come back and lead a small group. Okay, yeah. that's the church. Jesus yeah. says, "You're healed. Go preach." <laughs> Boom. That's yeah, right. That's 
the one step. And this guy, I mean, you think about it. And if, if we had a crazy naked man running around, you know, living in the graveyard, eating cats and dogs, we that would be that would be the, the, the yeah. Well, and and everybody would be the everybody would think that that's hopeless. That's a hopeless situation. And the church would be. for the one step and he's like well in order to get to that you have to get to here here and here and here and this needs to become your reality this needs to become your truth this needs to be the way that you speak the way that you think the way that you walk the way that you exist and so we're learning he's like you want the one step okay I'll show you how to get there and so that's what he's doing and it's been this process of disciplining ourselves and and getting to this place where we can function and live and dwell in the reality of of heaven, and, that, and that it, it is our reality, where we're no longer functioning based off of what's going on around us. Okay, so I'm going to testify to this journey, how this looks for me. Okay, because this is how it was in La Grande. Okay, in La Grande, the Lord told me to quit my job right when David started up a business of construction. And um, I never thought that David could or should have to support the family by himself. I was a working girl. I've always been a working girl. And so I and I for sure thought that we needed extra money because we always have had bills to pay off. Not because we had credit cards, just because the, the devil has been on us. After us. I'm gonna say that. Okay? So I, I got a job I I had a job uh, working at a title company. And the Lord said, I need you to be home with your kids. I want you to be home with your kids, and I want you to trust me. I want you to trust me to provide. I don't need your help, Christy. I'm like, you don't need my help? Well, I think you need my help. I don't need your help. So I came home and told David that I gave notice, and David's like, what are you saying? I just started a business. You know, nothing's up and running yet. You know, what are you thinking? And I said, the Lord told me to do it, and so I have to trust him. But my gut was in a knot. I have to tell you, I was absolutely terrified. And every month for 13 months, 13 months, for 13 months, I would feel anxious and on edge. And the kids were like, Jeremy was like 14 years old, 15 years old at this time. And Andrea was 14. And so he's in the business with... He's in with the business, and he's working alongside his dad. And we're, we start up this construction business, and we're setting manufactured homes, and Jeremy's working like a full-time man, and he's leading a crew, and he goes and he gets his, his contractor's license, and they're running a business. But every month, it was like this. We had, we had employees, so I had to make payroll. And these were men with families. These were men that were families. And so I felt the full weight of the responsibility of those families from our payroll. And I would be in, I would just be sick about not the money not coming in at the right time, you know. You know, you, you did government jobs or you did jobs for HUD or whatever and they would tell you, 
well, yes, the check is in the mail, and la, 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 and I would just feel so concerned that it didn't get here on time. So every month, by the first, the Lord would somehow give us the money. And I always paid the men first. I paid them before anything else. So I'd pay them in, and we'd have enough to squeak by until the next check came in. And I would be so relieved on the first, and I would praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I would pay, make the payroll. And by the fifth or the seventh, maybe by the tenth, I was sick again. Terrified that by the first. So on the, about the thirteenth month, I'm going through this cycle. No, I didn't figure it out. The Lord said to me, how many times do I have to do this until you start trusting me? How, how many times? I mean, we've done this now. Over a year I've done this for you. So, why, why aren't you getting it? So then I thought, okay, so how do I get my body to trust? Because I, my will was trusting. I was trusting because I was doing it. And I was terrified while I was doing it. And the Lord said, that's not trust. That's obedience, but that's not trust. So, good job on the obedience. Now I would like you to trust me. And that means feeling... <sighs> yeah, how do you do that? <sighs> <sighs> okay? So, I began practicing... <sighs> you know how you do that? You get a new thought. You remember, and that's why in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, it is repeated over and over and over the entire deliverance of Israel out of Egypt. Step by step by step. They recite it. They list it over and over. So he said, I want you to remind yourself everything that I've done that has been faithful for you. Have you ever, ever, ever not had your needs met? Uh, no. Then what's with the terror for, you know, the terror? He said, well, how would it be if, if your children got up every morning and by lunchtime they were terrified there was no dinner? Uh. And they're like, oh. Oh, I don't hope there's dinner tonight. Oh, I'm afraid there's not going to be any dinner tonight. You've had breakfast. Yeah. Okay, this is the first to the 31st, okay, of the month. <laughs> Say, oh, I hope, I pray that I'm going to have dinner. And you've had dinner your entire life. You've never missed a dinner. And if you did, it was no big deal because you had a great big huge lunch. You know what I'm saying? This is the journey that I've been on. So when we moved here, the Lord said, okay, I'm going to up the ante. You did a good job figuring out how to last from the 1st to the 31st. Now I'm going to make your business go bunk. So we lost. Uh, no. no, he just said it well. Well, he actually told us to close the business down and we weren't listening. No, 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 I can't hear you. You can't possibly ask us to shut down the business. He said, okay, bankrupt. So he pretty much shut the business down. After that, it just, it's been, we've never been able no, the Lord has basically said, I will not give you a monthly salary. We did for a while, and the Lord took that away. Not because he was punishing us, but because he's teaching us how to so rely on him. Day by day. Oh, I can sing it. Yeah. Yeah. Day by day. Here's the thing, is that the more I'm talking with these ladies, the more that there was... God taking away, God allowing, God, God allowing to something. To I know. Away. Yes, all right. I won't be so reactive to that. I hate that song. But that's where I get. I, I mean, I hate that piece right there. I don't like that piece. That's, true. that's where I get so stuck at. God allows it to happen.
sort of doing it just for, to just do I love my kids? Yes, parenting. Do yes. I love my kids? Yes. I, I adore so my kids. That, uh, Nothing uh, I have to do with my kids. Was about, right? But at the same time, I well, want them to be able to grow <laughs> and mature and gain wisdom and be able to come to a place where they can start stepping up their ability to process and think things through and respond in a way that is more mature and more grown up. So I may allow some of these things to happen, even though I could step in and say, um, I'm going to take the shoes out of the rain for you. Yeah. But I'm going to allow them to go through this. It's not anything that's going to kill that them. But I'm going to allow them to go through this so that they then can have the opportunity to step up <coughs> and mature in these areas. I'm not doing it to them. They're the ones left the shoes out there. But I'm not going to step in and, and rescue pull them, them back yeah, and save that. them from yeah. having an opportunity to grow. You're you're allowing them to have a choice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Th that's what that's what we have is, yeah, is right. it's a choice. Yeah. Okay, so I want to finish my story. So now where I am today, that's this is twenty two years later from the time that the Lord began Sorry, teaching me this lesson. Time. Okay. And I have now a notebook full of testimonies of how the Lord has provided for my needs without any help from me. No help from me. And that's why when I went to the church to pray the other day, and I'm telling the Lord, we have needs, Lord. We have needs. And I wasn't really, like, scared. I was, I, you know, I've been annoyed, though. I have been annoyed. That it's daily. It really would be super fun. I think to have it monthly, <laughs> but it's daily right now. And so I, I was letting him know because he said you, you you pray and then expect. And so then I'm I'm, like, I'm ready to really be in travail in prayer about it. And I just couldn't bring it up. I just couldn't I couldn't be anxious about it. I I I and he finally just said just take a nap. Yeah. Just take a nap. And while I was napping, he delivered funds to us. And I just have refused to, like, not, I, I kind of napped about it. Napped about the it. rest of the time. Okay, so that's kind of where I am now. I'm sort of napping about it. And we got another big gift yesterday. Somebody said. Testify, come on. <laughs> the people that were going to do the triumph over trauma found out how much it costs for us to print up those notebooks and whatnot. Handed us the cash. Wow. Said, here. Here's what you need. You don't even have to pay us back. Just get her done. So Jesus! Amen. Okay? Jesus! Amen. Now you have to testify about yeah. Michael. Please. Yeah. So I asked everybody to pick five things. Jim, you want to say something? Yeah, I just, I, 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 on this here point, that's where that's where God was, was, was showing Israel that you can trust me. That's why yes, he, you he put him in the me. wilderness for... 40, Forty years, years. They, they could not provide for themselves. No. Yeah. But every day, they, they got he manna, fed, right. and they no. worked, and they worked to build it up. No, they couldn't they, keep they it even one night. for that day. That's oh, right, except so on the weekend. Night. You guys need to watch this present thing, because the other thing, what's that? We talked about sleeping. We talked about He that. took about napping? Specific yeah. downloads when you're sleeping. <laughs> well, it's somewhere in scripture. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Just look up Bill Johnson, Presence of God. So he talks yeah. about that specifically. Downloads when you're right sleeping, there, Marcel, at the end of the table. So that there is no chance of pride. Oh, oh amen. Well, it's, well, and it's also God trusting. It's when your heart yes. is surrendered to the Lord. Because it was when Solomon, was the sleeping. greatest king who ever lived, it was when he was sleeping that he came and asked. You can have anything. Yes. You, you can yes. have anything you want. Yeah. Solomon, he was. It was. In, he was. He came to him in a in a vision and a dream, and he asked Solomon. You can have whatever you want, and Solomon asked for wisdom because Solomon was so, so focused and so in tune with how he could lead God's people in a way that would honor the give the most glory to the Lord. And so God not only not only gave him wisdom but also gave him everything else. He became probably one of the richest kings that ever lived. And anyway, so God God did way more. Okay, so there. <laughs> I'm just going to testify to that. I, we okay. could we could go all day about about <laughs> the different things, but um, I, I asked you to pray for five things that the Lord put on your heart. I had two confirmed answers. Uh, 
my girl over here <laughs> got healed. <laughs> of the people that the Lord put on my heart. So Amen. I prayed. Amen. You were number one. He's like, oh, pray. So um, <laughs> then um, I hadn't heard from Michael in a, a day and a half since we had, um, since I had gotten the call and things were really bad. Um, this is Michael Riddout. Yeah. Michael Riddout. Um, the one with all the tattoos and the... I don't know if you... I, I think you've got... Oh anyway, so... Come to find out that I didn't know that they they took him to Eugene. I wasn't able to go up there. God didn't even tell me to go up there, but I was kind of just praying that God would remedy whatever the situation was because literally his arm, they had all they were able to do down here was clean it out. And so now he he needed operations to put his arm back together. And so um, well, I found out last night that they did three surgeries on him up there in Eugene and began putting his arm back together and the last the remaining surgeries will be muscle reconstruction and skin grafts to finish his arm but but I I, I said Lord do not let him leave that hospital without his arm being put back together and I prayed that because I didn't know that he had had that he got the surgery so apparently God answered my prayers and had uh, the surgeries got done and so now he's able to be at home and is resting. And he came back into his right mind. And now he's speaking truth again. He's speaking Amen. faith again. Amen. He's now trusting the Lord Amen. again Amen. through this Amen. process. And, Amen. and so that was a huge, huge answer to prayer um, because I thought that he was going to be leaving the hospital. No, I did not think that. The, the, Michael was saying that he was going to leave the hospital, but I spoke against that, that yeah. he was staying to get a surgery so that he had his knee. Stuff taken care of. So, and God is working out every detail, and so God is bringing a place, a placement that is safe um, for his mom, and He is working out all of those things because uh, his mom needs to needs to have a, a much higher level of care. Yeah. Um, and so we're praising you for that, Lord, and thanking you for that. So, anybody else have confirmed answered prayers on what they prayed over yesterday? Yes, Hannah. Do you have a confirmed answer? Well, um, not confirmed yet. Oh. Amen. Moved along a little bit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
when I took my half an hour break, I was sitting outside with uh, one of my coworkers named Chris, and he's got a giant tattoo of a cross. And automatically, and I, and I was beside myself. I was listening to these words that were coming out of somebody else's mouth. My mind was some way place different, right? And I'm sitting here and I'm talking to him, and I asked him, "So what church do you go to?" He says, "Oh, I don't go to church." And I'm like, "Oh, I just saw, I just saw your your tattoo." Of, of a cross on your arm, and I automatically assume, and he goes, yeah, yeah, I believe in God, and I was like, you know, all you got, all you got to do is just ask him, you know, ask Jesus for forgiveness, and I led him in that sinner's prayer, right from the wow. right <laughs> right <laughs> right cool. so I got to see, I got, I got to become a, a, a light, you know, right on, and yeah, then, amen, and then God answered my prayer again, you know, I was not smiling all day yesterday, and not really sh showing the, the sign of, you know, God's face, and, just because I felt like I had, to, I had to hold the whole crew up spiritually. You know? Yeah, because he's working, the night crew's a tough, the tough night, bunch. Yeah, not, you know, everybody knows about the night crew. You know? So anyways, um, my shift came right after I got out of work. And I was walking to Sherm's and I went and I, I bought a protein drink because I, I wanted to you know, give my body something good you know, as a reward of making it through the day. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Job, I walk Josh. up to the car and I see John and his new puppy and just the, oh. the light that was coming off of him automatically made me shift and I was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so God answered my prayer about that shift. About, you know, awesome. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. One step? Yeah, one step. Um, you know, that one miracle changed the whole area. Yeah, it did. And if, if, if it did. you know, the Lord will put us in a situation yeah. where the one miracle yeah. will change the yeah. whole it's area. It's coming. It's We're coming. looking for that miracle. Amen, it's coming. It's coming. We're, the baby we're is going to be born. <laughs> that baby is birthed. Come on. Yeah, and that's it's coming. Baby. I don't know. Well, I just know that it's going to make a. It, there's so many people watching. I, I there are hundreds of people watching. Oh, well, uh, for for okay for for the shift. Yeah. That's for the shift because here's the thing. We're in a pretty fundamental group of Christians, and we believe miracles, but we believe that they're random, and that they are the exception and not the rule. And we, we think that God can, but he mostly won't. Okay? He can, but will he? We have to kill Willie. Kill Willie. Kill oh, Willie. Willie. Okay? okay? So, because, because it, we have to begin believing in a new way. We have to actually begin believing scripture. And for me to understand that I was an unbeliever for large sections of scripture, that was a shock. And I was ashamed. But then I thought, how am I going to believe that? Because I don't actually, I, let's just be real. I, don't, I really don't believe that. I'm not really sure that's really true. Because I've never seen it happen. And there are so many people that are waiting to see if God's going to be faithful to us. Because we're, well, we're kind of, we're kind of not, we're kind of an embarrassment to the Christian community right now because of our finances. You know, so. So we're not we're not making God look good, okay? Our ranch is foreclosed, okay? Wait we can't pay our wait stop. In the earthly realm, we can't pay our bills. Okay? Well, and some of them are still unpaid, Maureen. Hugely unpaid. I'll just tell you right now, we haven't paid a mortgage payment for over two and a half years because we have had. The Lord said, I'm, I'm going to take this. Okay, so he does take away. The Lord said, you're not going to be able to pay for your mortgage. And you're still to trust me. And we're getting, we're prophesying that we get the ranch back. Because the Lord told us that we get the ranch back. But I'm telling you right now that in all human perspective, we're just irresponsible Christians who say things that are out there and excuse our bad behavior, our irresponsible financial behavior, and blame it on it's part of what God told us to do. Okay? I'm, I'm, so I'm telling you that people are watching to see what's going to happen. And you know what? God is going to glorify himself, and we're going to be vindicated. 
It's the gospel. <laughs> it's the gospel. It's the truth. It's the healing gospel of Christ. But the, the fact, I mean, when it's the I good there, news. Weren't there 70 people there? We're going to have 100 this time, over 100 this time. God has to have brought these people. Oh, he <laughs> has. He has. I mean, it's a, it's a miraculous event. It is. It's a miraculous event. And this, what you're doing, uh, there's always a price. There's a price. <laughs> I don't care. And that's one, of, that's one of the prices is putting on those things. But we can ask God for uh, his strategies. Amen. You know, for the results that we are Amen. pressing in for. Amen. So, anyway. <laughs> I thank the Lord I'm here. I on that challenge. Anyway, I didn't mean to like take up the whole thing. I'm just no, saying that this strikes chord. Yes. This is our journey. This is, and I want, I want it all. I want everything. I want everything He died to give me. Praise I want it all, and I want everybody else to have it. We want it, and I want somebody to begin believing with us. I mean, there's a few, That's what we want to do. but we want. I want everybody to believe. I believe. Amen. Yeah, I, believe. I know. So here we go. Yeah. Here we go. We got lots of people that we want have a it lot to be of people true. We have a lot of people yes, we do. Yeah. But I want Especially all of Oregon these, to believe. These little ones here have so big will. Oh, it is nine seventeen. Yeah. So I wanted to encourage this because what we're doing right now is called testimony, testifying. Testifying. And, and, you overcome the enemy yeah. by the word. So the whole the time land, that we're doing this, actually, I woke up with this song in my heart. <laughs>
this love to rescue me. Oh, how infinitely this great love that has me.